The pivotal role of savings and cooperative societies remains indelible in the Kenyan financial space. Kenya prides itself as having a thriving cooperative movement. But we ask in this special virtual forum, what role are SACOs playing in cushioning members through the coronavirus pandemic? What are the incentives for members? How have SACOs in Kenya impacted the entrepreneurship culture? Welcome to the debate. I am your host, Abi Agina. And to be part of this live discussion, send your questions by logging in to slido.com. Enter the event code as hashtag KTN News Special. We are also all available on Twitter at KTN News KE. You can tweet me at Agina Abi. Use the hashtag KTN News Special. Here now are our panelists for this special conversation around the cooperatives movement. First off, we have Dr. Gamaliel Hassan, who is the acting chief executive officer and chief manager strategy and business at Steamer Sacco. He has over 21 years work experience, 16 of which have been in senior management. He is a certified Sacco development educator with both a credit union development educator and African development educator. He is also a Sharia expert holding a certified Islamic finance executive and an advanced SAIF in accounting and financial analysis. Dr. Hassan is a holder of a PhD and an, and an MBA in strategic management, a BA in economics, and is a certified public accountant of Kenya and a certified public secretary of Kenya. Our next guest is Mr. David Mategua, who is the national chairman of the Kenya Police Sako Society. He's also the vice chairman of the Akosa Foundation. Mr. Mategua is a delegate at the Cooperative Bank and also a member of the Kenya Institute of Directors. He is an employee of the National Police Service in the category of Inspector of Police. Mr. Mategua has served the society in various leadership positions beginning as a branch official representing Traffic Police Division in 1998 and in 2003 was elected to the, join the board of directors as the supervisory committee member. He was later elected as a board director and was appointed as the chairman of the credit committee from the year 2005 to 2008. He would then be appointed as the vice chairman of the society in 2008 and later took over the lead as the chairman in 2013. He has since then been re-elected by the members unopposed due to his manifesto and capabilities demonstrated over the years. Finally, we have Mr. McLeod Mukiti Malonza, who is the Vice Chairman of the Cooperative Alliance of Kenya. He has over 19 years experience in cooperative leadership. He has served in various circles and cooperatives in various capacities, including Chairman of the Harambe Sacco Limited, Chairman Cooperative Holdings Limited, Vice Chair Cooperative Bank of Kenya Limited, Vice Chair CAK and Director of Cooperative Insurance Society. He is a member of the Kenya Institute of Management, Institute of Human Resource Management, and Institute of Directors of Kenya. Mr. Malonza holds a BA in soci Sociology, I beg your pardon, and Economics, and a Master's in Business Administration, Strategic Management. Before we get into this discussion, let's begin by listening to the, uh, some remarks that were made by the Director General of the International Labour Organization, Mr. Guy Ryder, two days ago as the world marked the International Day of Cooperatives. Thereafter, we kickstart our discussion. One of the things this pandemic has done is to remind us just how closely the world of work is connected to climate change and therefore of the central role it must play in combating it. It's precisely because the cooperative model aligns short-term actions with long-term vision that it can give us precious insight into how to confront global crises, be it pandemic or climate change. Throughout uh, the COVID-19 crisis, producer and consumer cooperatives have been crucial in sustaining supply chains of essential goods and services by turning their communities and relocalizing economies. Financial cooperatives have set up solidarity funds to support effective businesses and vulnerable populations. Industrial, worker and social cooperatives 
has transformed their products and services to meet urgent local demand for protective equipment, food, supplies and social care. Well, that is ILO Director General, Mr. Ryder, just setting the pace for this uh, very important discussion that we are about to have. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. And uh, we do hope that we can get some participation from our ladies who are also going to be tuning in during this discussion on various platforms, including Twitter, Slido, and remember our hashtag is uh, KTN News Special. Let me start this discussion by taking a question to all of my panelists this moment. And perhaps let me bring it up with Dr. Hassan. As the country continues to man maneuver through the coronavirus pandemic, we've seen different segments of the economy being affected. Perhaps paint for us a picture. How have SACOs been affected? And what is the extent of the impact so far? Uh, thank you very much, Agina. Uh, that's a very good question. Um, I'd like to paint this from the perspective that uh, COVID-19 is not only affecting the SACO community or just the cooperative. It's a global pandemic. It's actually a pathogen uh, that has had, uh, I think, the worst form of, uh, of, of um, uh, impact yes. since, since the Spanish flu that happened in the year 1918. And if you look at it, you're not just looking at uh, COVID-19 as a pathogen, but also as an economic virus that has impacted all industries and all sectors, not just the, the circle sector. So uh, if you look at the cooperative industry, we are obviously part and parcel of a global economy. We are part and parcel of a bigger industry. We are part and parcel of the Kenyan economy that has also had an impact as far as COVID-19 is concerned. So, the question needs to be sort of uh, narrowed down to, to not just the cooperative sector, but also to look at what has happened globally, what mm -hmm. has happened regionally, what has happened locally in Kenya, and how are we measuring up as, an, as, as a country uh, as opposed to other countries. And from there, we're able now to have a discussion on, on terms of how the community, that is the cooperative community, has also been impacted. So uh, my take is that uh, just like any other industry, the cooperative sector has indeed uh, felt the, 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 the impact of COVID-19, but also as a cooperative industry, we are looking at mitigations, and, and I'm sure throughout the show, yes. we should be able to discuss that. Thank you so Thank much, you. Dr. Tariq. Yeah. Let me bring in a very seasoned speaker, that is Mr. Mategwa. You represent one of the largest circles in the country, that is the police circle. Perhaps, what has been the scenario like? for businesses and, of course, members when it comes to the adverse effects of the pandemic. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Bwana Akina. Um, uh, <clears throat> what we have really experienced as Kenya Police Circle is that with this uh, pandemic, we have, we have realized that <clears throat> we have had a low, low low application of loans. We have seen uh, the physical members coming, walking, walking to, the, to the branches have been minimal. Uh, we have seen also um, the deposits, uh, the way the members were, were really saving. They have really reduced their savings because of the impact of the COVID-19. Yeah. All right. Very much thankful for that. Let me bring in uh, uh, Master Malonza joining us via Zoom. Just walk us through what has been the effect so far on the Cooperative Alliance movement. Um, uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Agina. Um, cooperative Alliance, first of all, is the, the umbrella body for the, for the cooperative in the, this country and we do advocacy for the cooperative. Uh, the effects of uh, COVID, uh, we ensure that uh, the full cycle of the effect to the movement is now being felt. Um, we have memberships of uh, companies where people have, uh, companies have closed down, and therefore 
uh, we don't expect any contribution from them. So definitely that is it's affecting our circle in terms of savings. Uh, majority of them have come for loans, uh, which going forward, it is not going to be easy for them to, to repay. Uh, so again, it will depend on the, how fast the government is going to, to help these companies uh, come back because the effect to the movement is very is, is very immense and we were looking at uh, even some of them because they had already borrowed to the maximum that they cannot continue borrowing and some of them have, have opted to to withdraw their their sav savings and, and therefore you you find even the membership to the to the to the circle subsector is decreasing day by day so the effect of covid is is real and and uh, we have a, a, a mixture of membership. We have membership who have, uh, who have salaries. Yes. Others are business mem members. Mm -hmm. And some of them have lost the business. So we don't expect them to, to continue with us. Uh, we have given them uh, the period to not to pay their loans. But we expect going forward, possibly, they will find their footing and come back. All right. And we hope the government is going to help them so that uh, the movement can go. OK. Very interesting sentiments there. Let me take it back to Mr. Mategua. We've had a very interesting comments coming out of the fellow panelists around how circles have been affected um, and the issue of people withdrawing their savings, others, of course, uh, not paying up their loans. How disastrous will this be for the circles when you look at uh, two months from now? How will it impact on your operations? And what do you see in the horizon? Uh, thank you. Um, if I, I can give experience of Kenya Police Circle, for example, uh, the experience we are having is that members have not been affected a lot because 98% of the membership of Kenya Police Circle comes from the National Police Service Commission. That is the government, uh, the government employees. So I think we have not uh, experienced so much on uh, on, uh, on a defaults and uh, because the government has been paying us the monthly contributions and we have not had a, pro a problem on that. Uh, what we are, we, are, we are seeing is that since, the, since we started to experience this COVID-19, most of the members have been now going for virtual, uh, applying loans on uh, using technology. And that is what we have invested heavily uh, as, as a SACO, as Kenya Police SACO. And my, my, uh, my, I, my take on this is that we I encourage other uh, SACOs that we invest heavily in technology. That, that is how we are going to, uh, uh, to survive in this time of uh, pandemic. Right. Interesting. Of course, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if the police got a pay cut, but since the commander-in-chief got one, I don't know, did they also get a pay cut? Uh, no, no, not really. Uh, I think our, we didn't have that uh, pay cut. Uh, we are still monitoring the situation. If that demands, uh, but the, the limited resources that we have, I don't think um, uh, our, the membership of Kenya Police Circle, uh, they cannot afford the pay cut of now. Thank you. That was just on the side. But uh, gentlemen, let's take this conversation forward. Uh, Dr. Hassan, uh, we've seen uh, quite a big challenge, especially when it comes to people maintaining their lifestyles financially. And uh, as you've put it, you've seen a decline in the number of people coming for loans. This on the reverse side makes circles to be more liquid, having idle cash. What is the danger of this? And how are you strategizing as circles towards boosting people to take up loans? Of course, very hard times where people are very skeptic about starting any projects, so people are, are avoiding financial uh, support. Uh, again, another very good question. Um, uh, maybe we need to again broaden the question a bit uh, yes. that there are different kind of circles. Mm -hmm. uh, there are circles like you've correctly heard from our chairman uh, Bonamategua 
uh, whereby you have a common bond of say almost 98 percent up to 100 percent uh, like in his case not, not not very much affected by COVID-19 because at least the remittances are coming but look at it from a perspective that ESACO perhaps belongs in the aviation industry or the horticultural industry yes, or yes. the transport industry and mm -hmm. a hundred percent of that membership is derived from there so you can imagine their COVID approach is very different than say another SACO that has, has good tidings around this time. Uh, for Steamer SACO, we are somewhere there in, in between. Uh, majority of our core membership actually comes from the energy sector. Uh, probably say almost 80% of our business is generated from that particular uh, part of membership. Of course, there's a significant minority, about 20%, that comes from the non-energy sector. Now here you have uh, the airlines, you have the horticultural industries, you have the transport industry, you have the hospitality industry. And obviously they have been impacted. So for example, if an airline uh, goes ahead and says they're about to retrench people, that therefore means there's going to be an issue in terms of the money coming in. Very good. What point. I've seen from the steamer perspective is yes. that, um, and I can actually share some figures, uh, I'd say about 1% of our loan book. Our loan book is about uh, 30 billion Kenya shillings currently. Only 1% of it, I'd say, currently has been impacted by COVID-19. But we're monitoring the trends. It's still too early to tell us exactly where we're going um, for, for the course of this year. Remember the first three years, the first three months, sorry, January, February, March was COVID-free. So look at April, May, and June is when COVID has really hit us. So there has to be some trend analysis so, so that we're able to project moving forward up to the end of the year to really know what kind of impact COVID-19 is going to have on us. Sure. But when I look at our numbers, our fundamentals are very, very strong. Uh, when I look at the figures that are coming out compared to last year, I still say we're, we're, we're pretty much doing well. We could be doing better, albeit COVID-19. So maybe just to answer your questions now directly. Yes. Now what you're looking at in terms of mitigation is to move people towards the mobile platform. Get more and more, 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 and more products and services in the mobile platform. Which Moving is not people cheap. Away. It, Sorry? It will take, it will, it's an investment for the circles. Yes, it is. And, mm -hmm. and, and it's not cheap. Um, a mobile, a good mobile platform and a co-banking system would take you anywhere between 150 million to 1 billion shillings. I know banks who have spent almost a billion shillings in that. And therein lies the problem, because how many circles can afford that? Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say very few. Maybe the top 20 circles in Kenya are able to do that. And, uh, but there's a solution to that. And things like shared platforms, especially for the smaller circles and the smaller cooperatives who cannot afford to pay, let's say, 20 million or 50 million shillings or 100 million shillings to put forward a co-banking system or a mobile platform they could come back together and come under the umbrella of, say, Cusco or um, uh, CAK or any other umbrella that can be created as a vehicle whereby they can be able to share the resources to do, to, 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 to do that. In the panel, I've noted there's Police Sacco, there's Harambe, there's Stima. And I'm sure amongst ourselves, we're able to afford such kind of systems. But we surely need to consider the smaller circles outside there and the smaller cooperatives that might not be able to have that technological backbone that is required to defeat COVID-19. Agina? All right, interesting. And uh, to Mr. Malonza, very uh, heavy comments coming out from Dr. Hassan around technology and how circles can embrace this. But before we get deeper into that, uh, when you look at, uh, as we celebrate uh, uh, this uh, Shirika Day, which was celebrated on Saturday, when we look at where we've come from as a country, where do you place us? Are we on the right path? Are we moving as a SACO movement? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Gina. Uh, I'll say that uh, the SACO subsector, we are in the right direction. Um, currently, the SACOs account for the savings that uh, all the SACOs have in this country. By close of uh, last year, we were over $479 billion. Those are the savings that uh, are in the circles. That's a good we'll amount. Yeah. Substantial amount indeed. Yeah, yeah. So the first 479 billion, that, that's, that's a, a lot of money. But we could still have done well. Uh, the, the effect of uh, 
COVID, it's, it's real. It's real. It will be. It will. Be, it will come out possibly in the third quarter of the day, of the year, where because if you look at even the circles which have 90, 85 percent percentage of uh, assured remittance, then the other 15 percent of them, uh, you you don't know what is going to happen to them, and uh, we don't know. We, the president today has relaxed some restrictions. We don't know how long it is going to take, whether we, it's going to be between two weeks and then we go back to full lockdown. We're still waiting for that. But the SACO plays a very great role in this nation in terms of uh, development. And this is a sector which uh, the government cannot ignore. I remember as a CAK when we were trying to, to, to support the members who are working in SACOs which have been affected. Like if you look at the case of Norfolk, that they closed down. They have sent every staff home. Those people need to feed, first of all, before you talk of anything. Uh, so apart from the saving opportunity that the, the movement provides for each member, and SACOs also provide employment for this nation. Uh, and that is something. So the, the savings that we have, uh, the SACO sector owns 64% of the cooperative bank, which has over 600 billion. Uh, they own 74% of the uh, CIC insurance company. So it's a very serious sector that, that uh, it is playing a very crucial role for socioeconomic development of this country. And so therefore, uh, we, we cannot sit down there. We'll be uh, advancing our case to see how the government can support the resurrection of those circles which have uh, been affected, severely affected by, by COVID. All right, you raise a very significant point. And gentlemen, want to go on a quick commercial break. When we come back, I'd like to hear, Mr. Mategua, your thoughts around mitigation measures. We did see commercial banks giving uh, customers a moratorium on existing loans for about six months. What are the circles doing towards cushioning members? And of course, the people who have circle loans and they've been rendered jobless, what happens next? We'll be talking about this and much more after this quick commercial break. This is KTN News.